Right, so in um, uh, in this video, I'm going to go through ISP task uh, one on unit two waves and light. Okay, so the so the task, if you look for our ISP, um, is mainly around the idea of how we know that light behaves like a, a particle and a wave, um, and explain the importance of the photoelectric effect. Um, and defining uh, the, the and define and use the idea of radiation flux as power per unit area as well. So we've got to um, explain uh, complete explaining everything. One, uh, we've also got to um, complete um, task one questions. Uh, and also for the, those of us that want to to push on for the AA style, we need to to link the photoelectric effect to uh, electrical energy. So um, let's get straight stuck into this task. Uh, pages from our textbook that we need are 146 to 155. So I've got that open electronically here. So these are the pages that we'll be looking at. So I've flicked over the first part of it, which is just a, a brief overview of the chapter. Um, and sort of like the what the actual theories are, the evidence and the implications of that. So uh, the real uh, the, the real sort of meat to this topic starts a bit beyond this, where we start to talk about wave particle duality and quantum mechanics. And photons. So, uh, let's get stuck into this task. Um, so, explaining everything. One photoelectric effect. Um, explain why the wave model of light um, cannot explain emission of photoelectrons, but how the particle model of light does, or should be can, I guess. Uh, describe the experiment form to, to prove the particle model of light, um, and include a, a labelled diagram. So we use words like photon, wave, energy, work function, threshold frequency, photoelectron emission, interactions, and kinetic energy. So it says to include any equations, um, any graphs to help you determine any constants of variables involved in uh, the photoelectric effect. There shouldn't be equations after there as well, so uh, as you guys are aware, I occasionally make these mistakes. So um, let's first get stuck into these uh, equations. I guess that would be a good place to start. Um, as I've always said when answering exam questions, if you put the equations up there, it allows you, has, allows you to have a point of reference. So we could look in textbook, but you also know that on the VLE, um, I've put plenty of resources up there, so let's go to Year 12 Physics. Um, if we open up the side, Unit 2, uh, Waves and Nature of Light, uh, Nature of Light Lesson Resources, um, and then if we scroll down to um, Lesson 1, which had a History of Light stuff on there and the Photoelectric Effect, let's download that PowerPoint. Let's get that open. Okay, so uh, let's flick through and let's try and find these equations where we've got listed. Okay, so our first real equation that we're going to need uh, is the wave equation, which is related to this. So I'd certainly get the wave equation in there. Um, I'll just make this uh, the webcam part of this bigger so we can see what I'm getting across. There's a V equals F lambda. Uh, you might want to label what each of the bits are, but I'd certainly write in the units. If you know what each of them are, that's fine but I'd definitely write what the unit of uh, each one is. So that's meters per second, hertz, and meters. So that's a wave speed, frequency, and wavelength. You know you've got them in a the PowerPoint, just take them straight off the PowerPoint. All right. Um, there are some other equations that we come across. Um, so the photoelectric effect equations here. Let's just move the webcam to the top part of it. Apologies if the focus does go over now again. Um, so we've got E equals HF. Uh, we know uh, E is the energy of the photon. H is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, and that's the frequency of the radiation. Um, radiation flux equation, so slide 6 over here, that we know that doesn't have to do with the photoelectric effect, that's more to do with light as a wave. Okay, so we don't really include that when we talk about um, photoelectric effect equation. Uh, well, remember that these can be subbed into each other if we're talking about light, um, if we're talking about light as the wave. Uh, we can replace the speed with the speed of light, substitute that into this equation uh, by rearranging for f. So f is going to be equal to c over lambda, over wavelength. Um, so therefore, if I substitute my f in here, I end up with hc over lambda. It's another photoelectric effect equation. Right. So... We've got our main equations for this. We know there's an idea related to kinetic energy because we've already covered the photoelectric effects. So let's find our equation that's got that in there. Here we go on slide 19. Um, so we know that the energy uh, that comes in, so the energy of the photon, is equal to the work function 
and the spare range of the arrays becomes kinetic. So we know we can expand each of those terms out. We know that's uh, hf, we know that's hf naught, and we know that's half mv squared. Okay, that can be left as uh, um, e if you want, or eph or energy of the photon if you want to, and that can be left as five for the work function. That um, um, and we can leave that in that form for kinetic energy if you want, uh, but you can rearrange it into any form you want, or you can substitute between these uh, in any way you want if you wish. So, um, remember F0 is the threshold frequency, um, M there is a mass of an electron, so we know we've got a subscript E in there, so we know it's a mass of an electron, and that is uh, the max, that's the maximum velocity that the velocity, uh, maximum velocity that the um, photoelectric can have. Remember, it will not necessarily have that, um, but that's the maximum it can have, therefore this makes this EK max, the maximum kinetic energy that it can actually have. Um, so if you flip back to the ISP, it also uh, mentioned any graphs, um, so we're fully aware that there's a graph here um, that we have, so if I just quickly sketch that out, if that's uh, EK max on this side, um, and if this side over here is F, okay, uh, we can figure out uh, certain properties from the gradients and intercepts of this graph. So remember the gradient of this graph, okay, is going to be equal to H, and the intercept of this graph, so where it has no kinetic energy, we know that is the threshold frequency. So any metal that we have will have um, a different, uh, will have the same gradient, uh, but will have a different uh, um, x-intercept, so it'll have a different threshold frequency. So for the lower work function, it'll have a lower threshold frequency, so this one over here is a metal with a lower work function. Okay, and for that line over here, okay, that would have a higher work function. Um, note the lines are all parallel because of the fact well, they should be, clearly I'm not using a ruler, um, they should be uh, because of the idea that the gradient is Planck's constant, which is a constant of the universe. Okay, so we've done everything we need to know about equations, we've, we've used um, the idea of photon, uh, we haven't really talked about waves yet, we've got energy in there, we've got work function, we've got threshold frequency, we haven't really got any definitions of those that we do need. Um, we haven't used the term work, uh, uh, photoelectron yet, uh, or emission, or interactions, but we've talked about kinetic energy. So let's first go through some definitions of these words. So the work function, okay, remember the definition for that is the minimum, which I've got it in the PowerPoint, it'll be easier to show you from the PowerPoint. Uh, it is the, do, 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 do. let's just find it on the correct slide, it's a bit further along if I remember correctly. Uh, not so far back. Um, here we go. Uh, the minimum amount of energy required to release an electron. The only thing I want to add to that is from uh, it's enabling electron from the surface of a metal. Okay. So remember, you've got to get the idea of from the surface of the metal. Okay, and you've got to get the idea that this is the minimum, and we're talking energy here. Now remember, for threshold frequency, it's the same idea, but this time energy is replaced by frequency. Straightforward. So if we're talking about threshold frequency, energy is replaced by frequency. Very, very straightforward definition. So I'll just take that off there. Make sure you get that into uh, your explaining everything task, though. All right. So let's see how what we've ticked off so far. So we've included what work function of threshold frequency are. Let's go back to the very top and start really discussing what's going on there. So we've got to explain why the wave model cannot explain uh, the emission of photoelectrons, but the, how the particle model does. So if you remember correctly, there's a paper that I've been through in the past um, that had a really good description of how the particle model does explain what's going on. Guess what? I was just writing on the back of that sheet over there. So let's make this webcam bigger so we can actually have a look at how the um, uh, how the photoelectric effect is actually having an effect here. Well, I can just see that things are a bit blurry, so if I zoom in, uh, hopefully we'll get things uh, significantly neater. So in this question, uh, they were talking about why the particle uh, model is correct. Um, so we've got ideas here. Um, let's get this even bigger still. I'll zoom out slightly. There we go. So we've got ideas here um, that help us through this. So the first thing is about um, linking in intensity and if we increase the intensity that just means mo more photons are emitted per second that's all that intensity is on about 
Um, if we're increasing uh, the frequency, that will actually increase the amount of energy that each electron has. And remember, intensity determines the number of photons, um, the frequency depend determines the amount of energy. The key thing here in terms of interactions is that one photon only interacts with one electron. So in terms of numbers of, of, of interactions, one photon can only interact with one electron. Okay, so that's a real key point there. So if I scroll up on this slightly. Um, <clears throat> uh, so again, terms, uh, ideas about the energy uh, depending only on frequency. Um, and then you've got to really talk about the idea of that only above a certain frequency are electrons released. And we call that frequency the threshold frequency. If it was a wave, then the energy should build up over time and then photoelectrons should be released. But that is not taking place. To show you where else you can find some information about this, uh, I'll need to make the webcam smaller. Uh, great, I've just missed it. There we go. Uh, make the webcam smaller again uh, and maximize this. Uh, there's some stuff in the book on this. Um, so if we find uh, these diagrams over here, okay, so they start talking about how photoelectrons are actually emitted from the surface of metal. Okay, so that's definitely what you need to, to, to have a read of to make sure you understand that, and you might want to add a few more notes um, from there. The final thing uh, that it says is describe the, uh, the experiment um, that was actually performed to prove the particle model of light. Okay, so a, a labelled um, diagram. So here we have that experiment. Okay, so it's a gold leaf electroscope that's actually charged. Okay, ultraviolet light comes down on it, which released electrons, which meant that this became discharged and moved down. And there was a metal plate on top of it. Remember, the only difference that we've seen is in the FET animation that we have online. Um, so remember, if you type FET, photoelectric effect, into Google, so it's FET as in P-H-E-T, uh, photoelectric effect, into Google, you'll, you'll find the Java applet that goes through the bit step by step where it has um, a cell connected across this. And if you have a cell connected across the plate, you can accelerate the electrons as they come off. Remember, that leads to the idea of a stopping potential, which is essentially the voltage that actually is required to stop electrons being released. And that is always equal to um, the maximum, the voltage is equal to um, the maximum kinetic energy it has in electron volts. So if it was 5 electron volts in terms of energy, um, then it would need 5 volts to actually stop that electron being released. So that's pretty much enough for this section over here. Um, let's start moving on to uh, some of the uh, questions that we have below um, in the ISP booklet.